I'm Daniel, and I will talk about features in computer graphics. Let me first explain a basic term here, what is computer graphics. Computer graphics, as the word suggests, could be about cloud drawing pictures of computers, but of course that's not what it is. It's actually a part of computer science. Now, if you know something about computer science, then you might know that it often looks like this, or it might look like this, or like that. Computer graphics is not so different, but it has one huge advantage. It looks like this. <laughs> no? Okay, before I continue on computer graphics, I'd like to tell you a story. It's the story of Clemens. Clemens is in love with Alice, who lives in America. On one happy day, Clemens receives an invitation from Alice's parents, and he's very happy about this. What Clemens doesn't know, though, is that actually Alice's parents just want to test him, and they plan to do so by playing a game with him, this, the memory game. Um, it's this game where you have a lot of cards with pictures on them, you turn around two of them at a time, and you have to find pairs of identical cards. I guess most people know this game, right? So, let me tell you a bit more first about Alice's parents. They are what you might think of as stereotypical Americans. What that means in practice is that they don't drive a small car, but they drive a huge pickup truck. <laughs> they don't eat small burgers with a small soda, but they eat huge burgers with a huge soda. <laughs> and, of course, when they play memory, the usual memory game isn't quite enough for them, but they want something bigger, something with a lot of cards. Unfortunately, all these things come with problems. So the huge pickup truck, well, it takes a lot of fuel, of course. The huge burgers and huge sodas in the long term cause health issues. And huge memory games are not actually that easy to find in stores. So you could make one yourself, of course, but then you have to come up with a lot of pictures and draw many cards. Alyssa's parents thought about these things, and they came up with solutions. So, they actually don't drive a huge pickup truck, they drive a huge hybrid pickup truck. And when they eat burgers, they don't eat a huge burger with a huge soda, but they eat a huge burger with a huge diet soda. <laughs> and I was asked to put the slide in at this place. <laughs> uh, anyways. <laughs> so, well, about the memory game then, well, okay, so instead of borrowing a lot of cards, what they actually do is uh, they just take a regular memory game and then to make it bigger, they add some empty cards to it. So, well, in the meantime, Clemens has taken the plane and he's now arriving at the airport. When he gets there, he's picked up by Alice's parents. They get home, they eat dinner. After dinner, well, Okay, first they have to make up for the diet soda, of course. <laughs> but <laughs> once that is done, yeah, Alice's parents get out of the memory game. And Clemens is quite shocked. So, well, not only did he not expect anything like this to come, but also his memory isn't that good. And of course, he doesn't want to make a bad impression. So he starts thinking, what can he do to make a better one? And after a bit of thinking, he gets an idea pretty quickly. And his idea is to take a piece of paper, he puts it under the table to hide it, and he just takes notes what he sees on the cards. This, unfortunately, doesn't work so well. It comes with some problems. So first, well, he writes down a lot of words, so pretty soon the paper is full and he doesn't have any space left. Also, of course, well, because he has so many notes, finding something on the paper <coughs> takes really long, and Alice's parents get suspicious as they wonder what Clemens is doing there at the table. So Clemens realizes, well, I need something better. And he starts thinking again. And this time it takes him a bit longer, but eventually he gets a new idea. So his idea looks as follows. Instead of actually writing down words, he simply draws the outlines of the cards on the paper. Then, whenever a card is turned around, he draws a little symbol on the card. That way, Clemens can immediately see which cards actually contain something and which ones are empty, 
And also, you can use different symbols for different kinds of pictures, like one when there's an animal on the card, a different one when there's some plant, and a third one when there are people, for example. By using this trick, Laymans can now actually win a few of the games, and that makes Alice's parents happy. And as a consequence, Alice and Clemens can live happily together and laugh that way. Now, I have a question for you. So who of you actually plays a lot of card games? Uh, I see nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to be fair, I mean, I'm pretty much in the same boat there. I think card games are a bit old school today. So what would be more modern would be 3D computer games. And with that, we are back at computer graphics, of course. So 3D computer games are usually set in some kind of 3D world. And these 3D worlds are made by, well, taking a bunch of designers, and you give them a computer with the right software, you put them in an office, and they put together everything piece by piece for you. The problem with this approach is that designers are a bit difficult. They very often want to get paid for the job. They demand that they get the nights off. Also, they don't want to work on weekends. And some even want holidays from time to time. So this, unfortunately, is not only expensive, it also takes a long time to finish. So wouldn't it be nice, then, if you could just capture the real world and put it into a computer game? And I've brought something here. It's a digital camera, of course. And it does basically exactly that. I can take a picture and I can put it on the computer. Now, photos are two-dimensional, but that's not a problem because there are also devices for three dimensions. They are called 3D laser scanners and look basically like this. If you use such a device, what you get is, well, for example, this. And, well, I mean, it brings us quite close to our goal. However, if you look more closely, you can see that there are problems with this data. For example, here there's a huge hole in this window. And if you look at other places, you will find a lot more such and similar mistakes. So we have to fix these holes first. And of course, we don't want to hire designers or other people again to do that for us. Um, so it would be nice if the computer could do it. And let's think, so what does the computer have to do? What it can do is, for example, it could look for a different window, like this one, that does not have holes, and then it could just take this intact window and replace the broken one. And, well, these two steps um, are actually very much really similar to the memory card game. First, you look for a similar piece, and that's just what you do in the memory game. You look for identical cards. Furthermore, there's one limitation which is very important that the computer has. The computer can only compare two cards or two pieces at a time. And the same is also the case in the memory card game. You can only turn around two cards at a time. So luckily, it turns out that we can also use Play and Script now and use it in the computer to fix broken windows and other things. And the symbols that payments use are now called feature points. And in my bachelor, I um, researched into improving the quality of feature points. So here's an example. You see in red these red points that are features that could be detected by previously existing methods, but some were missing. So the computer might not be able to fix some of the things. And I improved upon the existing methods, and um, with my method, uh, the computer is then able to also detect these yellow points. So to sum things up, thanks to features, Clemens and Alice are happy together, and furthermore, we can enjoy great 3D computer games. Thank you.